TV, sponsored by West Beer, and I'm here with some of the cast from Voices Made Night. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi. Very well, thank, thank, you. thank you. So, can you tell me a little bit about your show? Okay, um, well, it's an adaptation from some short stories by Mozambique and Raitan Miyakuto. Mm -hmm. um, we've adapted it into a physical style of play. Um, they can tell you more? It's kind of like African magical realism, so um, the stories are, yeah, the stories are, are, are very, um, they're not realistic stories and they have a, a lot of different characters who deal with different kinds of longings, longings for um, warmth, longing for love, longing for touch, longing for um, lusting for, for connections with people, so um, it's a collection of five different short stories um, and uh, business. Sex, no violence, no, no burning, no, 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 no burning <laughs> political <laughs> issue, but it's, it's very magical, very poetic, and yeah, Fanito can also. Yeah, I mean, um, Richard plays the writer, and the stories on, in the show, they come to him, whether he's met the characters or he's dreamt the characters, whether the characters are alive or dead. Yeah. yeah, so I've seen the show, you kind of play the guy that's creating the stories on stage, I mean. Yeah, sort of, I create the stories, but the stories also create me or I... Oh, very oh. nice. <laughs> yeah, no, but also, like, at the same time, I'm, when I'm making things happen, the story's also coming to me and they're dictating to me where their voices belong and in which stories they belong to, so... Yeah, it's, hard. it's, it's a sort of give and take between mm -hmm. myself and the characters, yeah. What was it about Mia Kutu's stories in particular that you wanted to... Why did you want to adapt his story? I mean, I, I think because they, they haven't give you an insight into a part of Africa that is not normally seen. Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of, of why we wanted to bring it here is that it really presents a, a, a very unconventional, uh, less, less of a stereotypical vision of, of Africa. And I think that's, that's really exciting. I mean, in terms of, of the stories, the stories are so magical and so wonderful. And they kind of, they open up to a kind of depth of humanity that um, is, is seldom found, I think, in, in, in short stories. So it, it's really it's a very, very beautiful writing. So we, we love the writing and it adapted very well to our own physical um, storytelling style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, like I was just going to say, the style of writing is quite heightened and poetic and that suits the style of extended physicality that we like to play with. So what is the rehearsal process like? What happened when you got the stories? How did you go about adapting them? Oh, well, this, this is the third version for the third, yeah, the third version of the play. It was done before none of us were in the piece. Jenny was part of it, but not yeah. as an actor. Um, and the second time around, so there were already stories that were chosen. Uh, there were more. Um, on the second version, and then the third version, we ended up with five stories. Basically, what you did was you take the story, we read through the story, and then we read through the story, and then you create the narrative what's important in that story, and we leave out what's not, and then we add in the physical aspects of it. Yeah. So there's a layering process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because lots of the uh, stories are quite ambiguous in their meaning, and um, you sort of have to decide for yourself what the model is behind it or what the, the key theme that you want to highlight. So we did that and we sort of see through the stories, trying to find connections between them, sort of how we're going to order them. And then a lot of improvisation, mm. yeah, just playing I mean, around physically on the floor. I mean, we are, are a physical theatre company, so we like to work with um, what the, the all seven members of the cast bring to the, the process. So, um, you know, the director. Eight with the director, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's, he's, yeah he's, he's definitely. So he would set us tasks of, of and we divide up into groups and explore the, the stories ourselves, and then he'd like or not like what we're doing. But it's um, very much a, a collaborative way of working and a, and a process where we really um, use the, the fabulous talents of, of the, the mm. whole company. Yeah. How well do you think these stories translate on an international stage? Because obviously they are from Mozambique. Um, how well do they compute to another audience? I mean, I think the, because we performed at home and then there's a certain familiar, familiarity about the company style for one and the textures of the story. And generally Africans are very vocal and very, um, what's the word? Responsive, Responsive people in general so it's 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 kind of hard to tell here when you are on stage but after the show we've met people and they've said some good things about the show mm -hmm. and they thought it was 
an interesting take. It was mysterious. It was fascinating. Yeah. yeah. It's not something a style that people are used to because it's, it's storytelling, but it's not it's sort of contemporary African storytelling and contemporary yeah. in the mm. sense that we bring our own sort of yeah. um, style to it. I mean, I think I think it is an unusual piece. I think it's it's. Um, I'm not sure whether the the, the the fringe at Edinburgh is the right place for it in the sense that I, um, there, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't jump out in the sense that there's, as I said, there's no comedy, no violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, so I, I think that in a way we've had to work hard to find our audience and to find um, the audience that's interested in a more kind of poetic, um, whimsical, magical, realism kind of theatre. Um, but I think what, what is uh, very powerful about the stories and which I think does commute very, very well to audiences all over the world is, is the sense of, of humanity in the stories that yeah. is kind of universal. So um, you really, pres you're in a way really taken into understanding the, the kind of the longings of poverty, really, because um, I think that, that what, what, what binds all the stories is this kind of uh, landscape of poverty um, that, that all the characters come from. And, and I think that the, the, the stories really give you an insight into a very, the, those very kind of human feelings and human Accessible responses. Accessible human emotions. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Well, where can we catch your show? What time? Assembly Hall, Rainy Hall, every day at 10 past 4. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming and talking to Thank me. You. Thank you. I'll let you two nice. go and wash because yeah. this is a costume. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we just <laughs> normally look like that. <laughs> Thank you so much okay. for chatting to me. Thanks, Thanks very much. I've been Imogen for Waffle TV.